Resuming debate, uh, the Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I too am proud to rise in support of Motion 388, uh, tabled in October uh, 2012 by the Member from West Ghana. This three pronged motion, Mr. Speaker, mirrors previous motions from New Democrats, a total of 11 over the last number of years, calling for pandemic protection for firefighters for national building code amendments and the creation of a National Public Safety Officer Compensation Benefit. These motions reflect repeated requests from our brave and dedicated Canadian firefighters, requests which are sound and reasonable and deserve long overdue response. The responses that have been offered in recent years are an appreciated first step. In 2005, the NDP Motion 153 called for the creation of a monument to fallen firefighters. The new Canadian Firefighters Memorial is a fitting tribute to the courage and dedication of firefighters. This memorial, Mr. Speaker, is an important way to ensure that the names of the brave men and women who putting themselves, their lives at risk in the line of duty have lost their lives are forever remembered. Likewise, the yearly memorial ceremony is an opportunity for Canadians to pay respect to the fallen firefighters and to show our solidarity. In my riding of Edmonton Strathcona, our local firefighters are remembered with honour at an annual ceremony held at a monument paid for and preserved by the Edmonton Firefighters Memorial Society. Yet our solidarity and appreciation for Canadian firefighters must go beyond mere symbols and tributes. This important motion promotes action to actually reduce the loss of lives of firefighters and to ensure that when regrettably a loss of life does occur, that the family members left behind are adequately taken care of. This is the very least that we owe to these brave men and women who put their lives at risk daily in the service of Canadians. The first priority measure identified by our firefighters for action by the federal government is the creation of the National Public Safety Officer Compensation Benefit. This would provide adequate compensation to firefighters killed or disabled in the line of duty. The awarding of compensation to survivors often depends upon municipalities, resulting in significant disparities across provinces and territories, and even among municipalities. For example, when Kevin Olson tragically lost his life in the 2005 fire in Yellowknife, his spouse received a mere $22,000 benefit. In the tragic events of the loss of life of a firefighter, we can only imagine the grief of family members left to cope with such a heartbreaking loss. Yet it is precisely at this time, Mr. Speaker, at a time of mourning, when the financial pressure of bills and mortgages arise. Proper compensation for loss of life given to ensure public safety would allow families of fallen firefighters to be protected from the double hit of financial insecurity following their loss. I'm certain, Mr. Speaker, that Canadians would be surprised to hear that when firefighters are killed in the line of duty, their survivors are not eligible to receive the compensation available to RCMP officers and Canadian Armed Forces personnel. Yet they are men and women in uniform, dedicated to protecting our public safety and security. And um, I would mention, Mr. Speaker, that I had the privilege of doing the one-day firefighter work, all in uniform, wearing the tank and the hat, and going into burning building. And I have an even greater um, appreciation now for those firefighters. I proudly uh, display my own personal fire hat in my office. What possible rationale for excluding firefighters from receiving this compensation? This government frequently talks of their efforts for regulatory harmonization with our southern neighbour. Yet in the United States, a similar benefit for the families of fallen firefighters has been in existence since 1976. It's high time that this long called for compensation benefit be established in Canada. As a firefighter with the Edmonton Firefighter Union Local 2009 in my riding advised me, in his words, it is about the federal government recognizing the contribution of our nation's public safety officers, whether police, border guards, or firefighters. Mr. Speaker, surely this is what the federal peace order and good government power is all about. In the view of local number 2009 and all Canadian firefighters, it's the right thing to do. New Democrats agree it's the right thing to do. I encourage the government to support this motion and the creation of a universal compensation benefit similar to that available to other public safety officers. Secondly, this motion calls on the government to extend recognition to firefighters under the category of first responders under the Canada Influenza Pandemic Plan. I would concur with the Honourable Member 
that firefighters certainly fall within the plan's parameters, including under critical infrastructure and healthcare worker. This designation entitles, if properly applied, to firefighters to prior priority access to vaccines and other drugs in the event of a pandemic or a other public health emergency. Daily firefighters rush to the assistance of Canadians at great personal risk, and it's only right and proper that every possible measure be implemented to protect the well-being of firefighters. In turn, this will protect Canadians. Thirdly, reduction of firefighter injury and death must be made a priority. This motion calls for critical amendments to the National Building Code to specify that firefighter safety be an objective. Upgrades to the National Building Code should be made in direct consultation with firefighters. This would ensure that the safety issues impacting firefighters would be identified and addressed. I fully support this call, but frankly, many of the critical amendments have been long identified and could be expedited. Changes to the National Building Code will pave way for parallel changes to provincial and territorial codes. In Edmonton, we saw in the McEwen fire disaster an example of the impacts where fire prevention measures are ignored. Closely built homes of flammable vinyl materials, absent fire barriers resulted in a massive number of residences destroyed by fire. Recommendations by fire safety experts had been ignored. Firefighters were put at risk combating this major fire. The recommended reforms, Mr. Speaker, to the National Building Code related to improved fire prevention and the safety of firefighters could prevent death and injury. And I would point out, Mr. Speaker, that here we are, on this side of the House, speaking of preventing victims. The Edmonton Firefighters Local Number 2009 has also wisely recommended a national database to register and track types of fires and incidents of injuries. Such a resource, if made accessible to all firefighters, would provide highly valuable information to prevent fires, injuries, and deaths. So in sum, Mr. Speaker, time is long overdue for acting on these motions that have been brought forward over the past decade. Our firefighters deserve our support. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.